The historic cathedral city of St Albans in Hertfordshire, named after Britain's first Christian martyr, known for its Roman ruins, medieval clock tower and artisan shops. This is a classic commuter town. Trains take just 20 minutes to London with good local schools and the house prices to match. 63% of people here back to remain and the Lib Dems are quietly confident that this is a seat they can take from the Conservatives. The Remain sign in St Albans is very, very strong, so I think they will, uh, the Conservatives will struggle with their one-sided uh, Brexit plans. I took a real liking to Daisy Cooper. The Lib Dems. Uh, yeah, the Lib Dems. I've got a feeling that the current MP, Anne Main, is very out of touch with the people in St Albans. I think it would definitely go Lib Dem here. Mm. Um, I, I'm certainly... I, I must admit, I because of the experience of the referendum, I'm one of those that's quite jaded about thinking, does my vote actually matter? Is Brexit the most important thing to you when you vote? Um, it could well be. If it becomes a vote for this party and you will avoid Brexit, then yes, it will become number one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think St Albans, as a majority Remainer town, will say exactly the same thing as a whole. Just yes. wondering if you're getting any thought to how you might be voting. Uh, yeah. The Lib Dems are already in campaign yeah. mode, out in force in St Peter's Ward, where 74% of people voted Remain in the referendum. The local candidate, Daisy Cooper, came second at the 2017 election with a 14% increase in vote share. There's a lot of Conservative Remainers who are viscerally angry about what's happened to the Conservative Party, about the fact that it's become a vote leave party, and that basically they don't feel represented by the Conservative Party, they don't feel represented by the opposition, they don't feel represented by their local MP. Are you confident you're going to win here? We're very hopeful. So we've had some really good results this year. Um, in the local elections, we uh, took control of the council. We got 40% share of the vote in the European Parliament elections. So we're hopeful that people who are already voting for us and have, who have already voted for us twice this year will continue to vote for us again if a general election is called. I'm interested to um, think a bit more about the Lib Dem strategy more broadly. I mean, where would you sort of put the Lib Dems on the political scale? I mean, are you a centre-left party, a centre-right party? Where would you put, put yeah. the Lib Dems? Well, historically, I would say that we've always been a sort of social liberal party, so sort of slightly centre-left, um, but I'm not sure that that left-right dynamic makes sense anymore to a lot of people. There is this shift going on from left and right to a sense of open and closed values, um, and I think that here in St Albans, um, people who are former Conservative and Labour voters see the Lib Dems as their natural home now. We are internationalists, we are environmentalists, we're pro-business, we're pro-social justice, and they say to us that they share our values. I mean, do you think that really if the opportunity for the Lib Dems is to take votes from the Conservatives in places like St Albans, you actually need to be positioning yourself more as a centre-right party. No, I'm not sure that's, that's correct. The fact is, you know, the Lib Dems have a set of values. We are Liberals and the other people are realising that they share our Liberal values. So I don't think that we need to be shifting where we are at all as a party. We know that precisely where we are, people are coming to vote for us. The Conservatives have held St Albans since 2005, but the 6,000 vote majority is looking vulnerable. Alec Campbell was the leader of St Albans Council until he lost his seat to the Lib Dems earlier this year. He wants to move the political conversation on from Brexit. I think we've got the challenges of uh, Brexit and what's happening nationally and I think that is impacting us locally. So what we want to do is really focus on our record of achievement in government in terms of record employment levels and uh, in increases in pay, increase in NHS funding, increase in police numbers. Uh, but it's actually quite difficult sometimes to get beyond that because Brexit is the big issue at the moment. How optimistic or not are you ahead of a potential general election? I'm always optimistic, but I think the, the challenge is, is that when is the election going to be? Because I think if it was now, I think we would have uh, a lot of difficulty. We would have a lot of difficulty because uh, of the uncertainty over Brexit nationally and uh, the you know, difficulty the government's got and the fact that we've kind of got the split between the, the uh, Remain group and the Leave group in, in the Conservative Party um, and the moderate group and the, the more, the, the more Brexit-minded group. So, you know, I think at the moment we would have a real big challenge. We need to recognise that they are a part of the party that really represents many of the people in St Albans. Does it worry you a little bit, then, that they've, the way they've been treated? Well, it does, but I'm hoping that we can actually come to some reconciliation pretty soon and get them back into um, restore the whip and move forward. 
Are you at all worried at uh, the apparent strategy by Boris Johnson to really target those Brexit supporting seats in the north could actually mean that the Conservative Party loses seats like St Albans? Well, I think that that is uh, a, a big concern for, for me uh, and, and the association as well. I think that you know, we, what we want to do, we think a, a Conservative message works in St Albans and, and it should work in St Albans. And you know, what we don't want to do is to actually you know, try and win, pick up seats in the, in the north, which I think actually will be very difficult to do uh, on, at the expense of seats down here. Boris Johnson's election strategy is to mop up the Leave vote and Brexit backing marginals while hoping the Remain voters split between Labour and the Lib Dems. But the problem is, in marginals like St Albans, the Remain vote isn't split. And if they lose ground in areas like this, then the path to a majority looks even more difficult. The Lib Dems' anti-Brexit position is playing well in St Albans, but it could hold them back in other parts of the country. The Liberal Democrats, if they're going to win and, and, and win, and win big and recover as a party, because they're a very, very small minor party today in terms of parliamentary representation, they need centrist voters, many of whom would identify as centre-right. And the move towards revocation is, is in my opinion, unhelpful. Brexit is a, is a good starting point for the Liberal Democrats. It gives them a clear message and cut through that they've lacked for a, de a decade. Um, however, it's not nearly enough for them to campaign as a single issue party. That's not how voters vote. Um, the coming election, yes, it's an election that has been brought about by uh, the convulsions of Brexit, but actually it, Brexit isn't going to be the only question in the election. Domestic issues matter. They, ma they mattered in 2017, they mattered in 2015, and they'll matter again in 2019. As the Lib Dems gather for their annual conference this weekend, the leader, Joe Swinson, says she wants to be Prime Minister. That may be a little ambitious. But thanks to seats like St Albans, the resurgent party could still have a big say in the outcome of the next general election.